Hi guys, today I want to share a revelation with us of uh, something that God gave me about five years ago, an experience I had about five years ago. I was with a young uh, man who came to my house and uh, we were just talking and um, somehow the conversation drifted into you know, the problems that Christians, Christians face in modern days today. And I was speaking from the perspective of, you know, how so many Christians are not able to stand when problems hit. It's very painful and difficult. You know, when you see, for instance, a Christian walking away from a marriage, you know, I mean, if this person knows God and understands God and trusts in God, why is this happening? Also, you know, uh, why Christians are involved in shady business deals, you know, why Christians cannot stand when real problems come. It hurts. And just as bad as that, you know, the question also arose of why, you know, why so many pastors <clears throat> on various pulpits all over the world, you know, preach sometimes strange doctrines, light strange fires on the altars, teach people weird things. Now, I know it's prophesied in the Bible. The Bible talks about, you know, many falling away from the faith, many, uh, you know, people having itching ears, giving themselves preachers who will give them, tell them things they want to hear and all that. But the, 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 the concern about how pervasive it is, is concerning. It's, it, it's, it's bothersome. And as I was speaking with this young man, you know, I just felt led to pray. And, um, you know, we just kind of spontaneously broke out into prayer. And as we were praying, tears came out of my eyes. I just felt the, like I was carrying a burden for the whole world. Now, I don't consider myself to be some superman or anything. But in that moment, I felt it. And as I was weeping before God, crying about the state of, God's own children in this world at this time. Certain words started to come out of my mouth that were right out of scripture. Two passages, quite far apart. The first one was from, you know, was from uh, First Kings. Is it First Kings? Yeah, First Kings chapter seventeen. When we spoke about uh, when we met uh, Elijah, <coughs> Elijah was going through a rough time. He had just, um, you know, he had just had that encounter on Mount Carmel with the 400 prophets of Baal that killed them. And he was now on the run. I don't want to get into the issue about him running from a woman. I don't know why people say that. She wasn't just a woman, she was the queen. And she had proven herself to be Jezebel. Yeah, she had proven herself to be the king's executioner. So there was nothing weird or strange about that. She was the queen and she had the force of the whole nation behind her. So there's nothing strange about that. He was running because he was weary. He had been carrying this burden for a few years, about three years. And it was a lot. And he was just tired. And in that moment, he started to cry to God. Lord, it's only me that is left. And the Lord spoke to him. He said, I have preserved for myself 7,000 that I have neither bowed to bow nor kissed him. God was telling Elijah in that moment that he had preserved 7,000 who had neither bowed to bow nor kissed him. This day in August of 2014, I had the same words come out of my mouth as I was praying, crying. And the word the Lord spoke through me. He says, I, had preserved, I have preserved for myself 7,000 who have neither bowed to bow nor kissed him. Then the word moved on, and suddenly I found myself speaking another passage. He said, the day of the Lord is coming, a day of darkness, of gloominess, a day in which the army of the Lord shall break forth in this world, and none shall be able to stop them. They shall leap over walls, and everything in their wake shall be destroyed. I was praying. For a moment I just... As, as the prayers ended, I knew those words came from 
a passage, but I didn't remember where it came from. I knew where the Elijah passage came from. I went and looked at it. But it took me a, a few moments, I suppose, to realize that the other passage came from Joel chapter 2. So I went and read it. And it was very interesting. But as I was pondering these thoughts, the understanding for the passage came to me. The Holy Spirit was in that moment helping me understand something, import something important. That even though I felt the burden for the body of Christ and for the world around me in that moment, I was not the only one. God had reserved for himself people all over the world. I have had people say things about it at different times. You know, the remnant. Well, I don't think of it that way, but they might just well be the remnant. However, the bottom line is, there are people all over the world whom God has preserved, whom God has reserved. They may not be the same ones we see on the pulpits. They may not be the popular preachers that we know and hear about and we quote all the time. They may not be the ones we see on television and so on. No, but there are people strategically positioned where they need to be. Some of them are in training, being prepared for the day of the Lord that is coming. And that day of the Lord will come. The day in which God's own people will rise and come together as the body of Christ and function as the army of Christ on this earth. How does that fit into the rest of the revelations? To be honest, I don't exactly know. I only know the revelation that the Lord God has given unto me. And, I'm sp and the funny thing is, about that same period, in so many different spheres, I heard many preachers saying similar things. I think I even heard, I heard someone like Benny Inn make a prophecy along those lines. I, heard, I read a book, I think by A.W. Tozer. Oh, you guys should read on that guy. A.W. Tozer, speaking along those lines. And I was blown away. Clearly, God was confirming to me that what he had said, what he had spoken in his word, and on that day, through my mouth, was true. There is a day coming in which the children of God, the army of God, will rise. Right here and now, even though it looks like things are falling apart, and I guarantee they will get worse before they get better. Okay? Even though it appears things are falling apart, the day is coming when the army of God will rise, and they will march through this world, and nobody will be able to stop them. Anyone who stands in their way will be destroyed. They will be obliterated by the movement of the Most High God. This is a word of hope for every child of God. This is a word of hope for everybody who has been waiting and trusting and wondering and concerned that things are getting worse. They are getting worse, but they will yet get better. Okay, the Bible says... In this world, we shall have many trials and tribulations. So, but good, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer. The Lord God Almighty has overcome the world. Inevitably, a relief is coming. Inevitably, a breakthrough is coming. But I promise you, it's not going to come in a hurry. It's going to come after there has been tribulation. There will be persecutions. There will be challenges. Be of good cheer. Take hope. Don't quit. Don't break. Stand. The Bible says, guard yourselves with the armor of God and having done all to stand. So children of God, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever the circumstance you are in right now, I challenge you to stand. Keep your gaze on Jesus. Keep your eye on the promise. He will never fail. Though it tarry, wait for it. It will come to pass. Yet it will not tarry. At the appointed time, God will break forth in and with and through his people. And he will glorify his own name. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for listening. If you have any comments, you can put it in the comment section down there. Click on the like button. Click on subscribe. And uh, click on the notification button to be able to receive other messages as they come up. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.